Well, welcome back, guys, to another episode of The Way Podcast. Um, I'm Zenya, and I'm here with Jesse. I'm here with Kane, and I'm here with Izzy. And we have a very excited episode for you yeah. today. It is Pentecost Sunday, and in collaboration with Thy Kingdom Come, we are going to be interviewing the Archbishop of Canterbury. So exciting. Should we just get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. So good, good to have you. Morning, Ken. We have a special guest. We've got Archbishop Justin. Thank you so much for being here today. Pleasure. Should we call you Archbishop Justin? Well, just Justin is Justin. fine. Awesome. Yeah. What do you do as the Archbishop? What does the Archbishop do? I'm sure people are probably listening, thinking... Great. What's an Archbishop do? Yeah. I can't imagine anyone is wanting to know. There's lots of things. It's the most extraordinary job. Let's start at the local. I'm... I'm the bishop who serves the Diocese of Canterbury, but there's someone who does most of the work there, so that's quite nice. <laughs> and then I'm the bishop who oversees the life of the 29 dioceses, areas of the country in the southern part of the country of the Church of England with about 6,000 clergy and um, so on, and about five six hundred thousand people something like that perhaps a bit more and then i'm the senior bishop of the church of england uh and then i'm uh also for most people the senior bishop of the anglican communion which is anglican churches in 165 countries with um about a thousand dioceses and about 80 million people and so not much. Not much, <laughs> not much. And then I also have to do the sort of, when there's big events, I do the, the vicar to the nation bit. Mm. Um, big funerals, coronations. And I also, have, I also have the privilege of sitting in the House of Lords and making speeches in Parliament. And I do loads of stuff around the world on reconciliation work, peace building, and um, all sorts of other things as well, and work with the United Nations. And it's, it's um, no two days are the same. It's always fun. Oh, it's fascinating, man. I don't think I really knew much about what an archbishop does. Yeah. So there you go. Well, now we do. Now we do. Now I know I'm all of it. I'm recording something for Radio 4 this afternoon. And that, Ooh, that is fun. You're just coming and flexing on all of us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, flexing on all of you. <laughs> that, that's right? a good way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm really nervous about that because it gets me really wound up. And the people I'm, I'm interviewing other people and it's really terrifying. Mm. Cool. It sounds like you've been an archbishop for a while then. Has there been any embarrassing moments? Oh, yeah, we've got to know. <laughs> What's your favourite one? <laughs> Go on. Oh, I mean, there's lots of odd ones. There's stupid things I've said when I've said entirely <laughs> the wrong thing and spent the next two weeks trying to sort out what I meant. Um, but there's moments like um, nearly dropping the rings at Harry and Meghan's uh, wedding and actually dropping the wings at, rings at another wedding I did. Oh, goodness. That was pretty embarrassing. Did you feel nervous, quite nervous? Uh, yeah, I, well, for Harry and Meghan's, I, on my hand. And they put the rings, the best man put the rings on the book that I was holding, and they sort of started going. Oh, no. And I had to do that <laughs> rather quickly to save them. The next question I have for you is... <laughs> <laughs> is like, right? Yeah. Is... Um, how did you know that God was calling you to be the Archbishop? That was one of the easier ones, because one of the ways that God... Because God calls everybody. Mm. Every single human being, whether they know it or not, is called by God to serve him and to follow Jesus Christ. And to do that's the best decision they can ever make. Yeah. But yeah. for posts like bishops and archbishops and stuff... It's not me saying, I think I ought to be the Archbishop of Canterbury, because that would be so arrogant. It's about the church, through its structures, recognising that this is the person they think they want. And obviously it goes wrong quite regularly. But in the end, we recognise we're obedient to what the church tells us to do. And you find that in the Bible. Mm. In the Acts of the Apostles, you probably remember when the disciples at Jerusalem are praying 
uh, not Jerusalem, but Antioch. And the Spirit says to them, set aside Paul and Silas for the work I've got for them to do. So it's not Paul and Silas saying, oi, we're here, we think we ought to do this. Mm. It's the church saying, God's told us, you're the ones, go and do it. Wow. People talk about my ministry. Um, it's not mine, it's God's. We yes. listen to what God tells us to do. Yeah. Yeah. Through the church. Mm. Mm. And how do we let like, the Holy Spirit guide us in, in those moments? Well, or in everyday life. It's part of part of that is listening to what people are saying. Mm. So very often the Spirit speaks through other Christians, either through one of the gifts of the Spirit, a prophetic word, or something like that, or simply a group of people who say, "This is, you know, this is what we think you should be doing," and something in you speaks powerfully about this that being right there's a, a sense yeah that that makes sense to you mm. but we're not we've got to avoid the chronic disease of this age which is individualism mm. it's mm. not i decide and, and everyone else confirms it it, it it's an interaction wow. and sometimes we have to be conscripted rather than volunteering and that's always been true in christian history there was a bishop called ambrose um, who was one of the great bishops of the early medieval period, he literally was forced to become Bishop of Milan, Archbishop of Milan, because he didn't want to be. But the church people said, you're the one. Mm. Wow. Interesting. It's not always easy, but mm. the Spirit works through us, and even when we mess up, the Spirit still is faithful and works through us. Mm. Well, and a key part of um, being guided by the Spirit is prayer and all of that stuff yeah i think church of england's going through a very complicated period at the moment but then it's very hard to find a moment when it isn't but i was reading genesis this morning uh all about abraham which i've been reflecting on for quite a long time as i looked at it and was reading a commentary on that book of the bible because it's always good when you're reading a book of the bible to have something that helps explain the bits you might not understand. Mm. As I was reading it, the person who'd written the commentary was saying basically that one of the, there are two key things that we can get wrong. Um, first of all, we know that God is faithful, but we go wrong when we forget that. So we think it's all mm. down to us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And God can't sort things out. So if we make a mistake, it's somehow fatal. Mm. And second, uh, however, God works through human beings, and that's a really messy process. And so it's not that we sit back and let God do everything, and it's not that we think it's all down to us. We need to trust the faithfulness of God and to live with courage, obeying what God tells us to do. Mm. And that's the way things work. Mm. And that means prayer. So what is Pentecost? Pentecost uh, is, was originally uh, and remains a, a Jewish feast, day of celebration. Mm. And for the Jews, it was when um, Moses was given the law by God. But for Christians, it's when the spirit is poured out on the disciples and they are scattered out to bring people to know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. So it's a really exciting time because uh, it's, it's both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's about the gift of God to show us how to live in a way that pleases God. Mm. Man, that was under two minutes as well. Yeah. Under could, two <laughs> minutes, uh, really it's, well. it's, yeah. You're practised at this, isn't it? No, I'm just <laughs> making up as I go along. Go on then. <laughs> I can whisper on forever. I mean, I just fill time. But yeah. Second, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? I oh, sort yeah. of guess that. that. Yeah. I yeah. guess <laughs> that. <laughs> Are we wow. going to get another okay. question, or yeah. am I going to sit here just <laughs> filling? Yeah, that's no, good. And obviously, our kind of audience is more younger leaders. Yes. And. Um, You've been a leader for quite some time in your life, right? Is that rude to say? I apologise, that was a little rude. No, no, it's, I've been a leader for, I've been a church leader for 
very long time. Many of my colleagues would say far too long. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't, we wouldn't. <laughs> but um, I, guess, I guess our our question as a team would be, what are like three top tips for a young, growing Christian leader? One, the most important thing is your relationship with Jesus Christ, yeah. with God. That's great. If you lose sight of that, you've lost the whole plot. Two, have people who hold you accountable and don't go with people who just agree with you or support you or tell you how wonderful you are. Mm. Three, trust God and take risks. Mm. Don't be a safe pair of hands, but always work collaboratively when you're doing that. So you check with others, but in the end, you know, at the end of time, we each of us face the judgment of God and we need to be able to say, we trusted you, we did our best. We sought to serve you with everything we got and I had people around me who could tell me that I was an idiot. And if I was allowed another one as a sort of bonus, right. I'd, I'd say don't read social media about yourself because hmm. hmm. it'll really get you down. Get others to do it and tell you when something important is being said. Hmm. That's good. And just a bonus question. I know being a great leader, you must have... A great leader. You, you hear that? Kane called oh, me great. Oh, oh, you know he's never true. called me great in my life. So that's a There may claim. be reasons for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> probably is. Probably is. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a great leader. Yeah, go just, on. Just being a, being a I'm just a human being. Yeah. Human being. Um, you must have good mentors. Is there anybody in your life that has helped you to be the person you are today? Mm. Yeah. One of the most important ones, well... Probably the most important one is my wife, mm. who is very wise and very thoughtful. Mm. Our kids are very, very good at challenging and speaking and being honest with me. And also that mm. I know that they love me. So, and they're, they're all adults and they're just lovely. So that helps. Mm. And then of particular people, there was actually my, one of the greatest influences on me was someone extraordinary who died in December in his late 90s called John Collins, who was vicar back in the 80s in a church called Holy Trinity Brompton. He was just one of those people who was totally honest, but totally accepting and just a remarkable man. I can think of others. There was a cardinal in the Roman Catholic Church who I only ever met once for one afternoon, but it shaped my life. Wow. So, you know, you can go on and on yeah. with that yeah. list, yeah. but... Those would be, and then there have been other people from outside the church. The point is, don't limit God. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes you'll meet someone who's not a Christian, but they'll say things and speak about things in a way that you think, oh, that's so wise. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And that God could speak through them. That's us done. That's us done. I am really grateful. It's fun doing all of this. I'm really grateful, all of you, to Senya and Jesse. Mm -hmm. And Izzy and Kate. Um, hey. Got it! Yeah. Oh, that's rare. Yeah. Oh, that's a miracle. And um, just say thank you very much for having me on. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so much. And for thank joining you to us. anyone who's listening, if you still are. Mm. No, thank you so much for joining us. I feel, I feel like I've learned something. Have you guys? Absolutely. What yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're very kind. So, thank Bless you. you. So do I. Thanks a lot.